uh, well guys today I'll talk a little bit on the input output analysis so basically with the help of input output analysis we try to understand the interdependency or the interrelationships that might exist or that that exist between the different sectors of the economy so in this way say for example you talk about the agriculture sector the industrial sector and the services sector the agriculture sector is uh, an input for the industrial sector or the industrial sector is uh, is dependent on the agriculture sector now again the services sector is again dependent on the uh, industrial sector so this whole flow of input and output mechanism that means the output of one sector becomes an input for the another sector and the uh, output of again that middle sector becomes an input for the last sector or maybe the services sector and so on this whole flow of uh, the output mechanism from the different sectors of economy can be analyzed with the help of this input output analysis say for example we can talk about agriculture right so when you talk about agriculture agriculture needs some amount of or some kind of paddy or rice to produce itself so the uh, paddy is in an input in itself and also it produces an output that is in the form of paddy now this paddy becomes an input for the industrial sector now this industrial sector is again uh, dependent on the agriculture sector now this an uh, industrial sector again they will produce some fine rice so <coughs> they take paddy in the form of input in the industrial sector and now they produce fine rice so this fine rice becomes an output in the industrial sector all right now again this fine rice that is being produced will have to go through uh, will have to go to a different sector that means the services sector so this services sector uh, say suppose uh, you talk about advertisement sales transportation and all those kind of uh, uh, i mean the extra costs that are being handled by the services sector is taken care of by the services sector say for example for packaging or sales of that fine rice that was which was an output in the industrial sector now becomes an input for the services sector so anyway this whole flow of output this whole flow of output from one sector to the other sector that means the output of the agriculture sector becomes an input for the industrial sector now the output of the industrial sector becomes an input for the services sector so with the help of this input or output analysis by making some valuations of according to their outputs so we make the valuations according to the amount of outputs that they produce uh, well they while they flow from one sector to the other sector so this uh, we have taken here in terms of rupees uh, I mean, so this is this is your input side and this is your output side. That means we are taking some three sectors here, right? The agriculture sector, industrial sector, and the services sector. So this 30, 30 means the output that is being produced or that is being produced in from the agriculture sector. All right. Now this output of the agriculture sector is again becoming an input or becomes an input in the for the industrial sector all right now this industrial sector again the output of this industrial sector so we have taken an example of paddy or rice right so here paddy is being produced or the rice is being produced now this rice is being sent to the industrial sector so it is uh, refined or made into some fine rice so it becomes an output or the output that is being produced produced in, from the industrial sector is say the fine rice now this fine rice will has to go through uh, again a different stage uh, so that it, they can sell it to the market or they can export it or to some other countries and so on so now it again goes through a different stage that is the services sector so it becomes an in input for the services sector and this 50 will give us the output or the valuation or the valuation of the fine rice that is being produced and it is being put for sales or for exports and so on now this final demand final demand will give us the total amount of fine rice or since we have taken here the example of fine rice will give us the total amount of fine rice 
that is being consumed by suppose a host of other uh, variables suppose say like household consumption government consumption investments and say net exports so or what is being left after the net export and this gross output will give us the total value all right that is in terms of rupees we have taken here the total value of the output of the agriculture sector all right yes so similarly the industrial sector again is an input for the agriculture sector now and this one again from the agriculture sector it is becoming an input for the industrial sector in the same way these are the whole flow of outputs the whole flow of outputs in terms of certain in terms of all these values that is being uh, produced in the different sectors of, of the economy well now our most important thing to understand or you if you need to do the input output analysis of this whole flow of uh, outputs from the different sectors of the economy or the when we want to understand the interdependency or the interrelationships between these different sectors of the economy we need to find out or uh, we need to resort to what we call the technological input uh, or the input coefficient matrix so for that we will go through this yeah like i said now in order to understand the whole mechanism or the calculation technology or the methodology of cal calculating the input output analysis we first need to have the technological coefficient matrix so for doing that what we uh, what we do is suppose we have this agriculture sector now to get that input coefficient matrix we divide that particular sector so since this is the agriculture sector agriculture sector we will divide each of these numbers with the gross output of that particular sector so that here it is the agriculture sector so i put green here and here the total output or the gross output was supposed to say 200 so we will divide them divide each of these numbers or the flow of outputs from the agriculture sector by 200 now for industrial sector again we will divide that particular sector with that with the gross output of that particular sector so here since it is uh, 220 we will divide all those uh, all those flow of outputs for that particular sector suppose the industrial sector with 220 similarly for services we will do the same we will divide the flow of outputs for the services sector with the respective or the with the over gross output of that particular sector so ultimately what we get is known as the input coefficient matrix or the technological coefficient matrix so actually since it is uh, also known as the input coefficient matrix it is an actually a calculation of the ratio of the input and the total output or the gross output so actually it indicates the amount of output of the i sector or the agriculture sector which becomes an input or intermediate goods for, as an input for the other sector all right so this the amount of output of the agriculture sector becoming an input for the industrial sector to produce one unit of output for the agriculture sector so that's now uh, after we calculate the techno technological coefficient matrix we get what is also known as the input coefficient matrix that is 30 by 200 we get 0 0.15 40 by 220 we get 0 0.18 50 by 240 we get 0 0.20 so similarly we will do it for all the output flows the different flow of outputs for the different sectors of this economy so ultimately what we will try to do is we will try to extract this and put this into a matrix format so that we can do with our calculations all right so we will take these three different sectors x1 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 x2 and x3 the three different sectors and of course we will uh, take the different uh, output input coefficient matrix of the different sectors of the economy that is the 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.20. Now, and here we will try to uh, we will exclude this labor input coefficient matrix just to make it more easier for you to understand. All right. So here 
what we do is we will extract this input coefficient matrix ignoring the label coefficient matrix like I say ignoring the label matrix we will extract these numbers or the input matrices that we have the input coefficients that we also call the input coefficients this input coefficients are we will try to extract that we will extract them into a matrix format that is and we will name them as the a matrix and that is the input coefficient matrix and we will also extract the different sectors of the economy and we will notify that in terms of matrices x matrix that is consisting of x1 x2 and x3 or the agriculture sector industrial sector and the services sector so uh, adding up the final demand we have this uh, for this final demand we also denote this matrix with the d matrix that is 80 90 and 100 and that is equal to the gross output that is also represented by a matrix x and it is 200 from here 200 220 and 240 ignoring this uh, labor ignoring this labor uh, input coefficients as well as the labor gross outputs all right so now uh, so now putting the above table in the matrix form ignoring the labor matrix denoting this a matrix input mat input coefficient matrix a x d the final demand x the gross output and x here is the different sectors of the economy so ultimately what we do is we can we can again uh, manipulate this uh, this equation ax uh, this one just by doing like this that is a into x so here it was multiplication a into x plus the final demand as well as the gross output so ultimately we can also write it as x, d is equal to, is equal to x minus ax or d is equal to i minus ax here we cannot write 1 minus a here why because since this is a matrix so we will have to make use of the identity matrix here your a matrix is of the format 3 to 3 or 3 by 3 we call that so your identity matrix also will be of the form 3 by 3 well as you all know identity matrix is a matrix which where only the diagonal elements where it has where the value of the diagonal elements are just one or unity and rest of the elements are zero okay so in this way again we can also manipulate this that is x is equal to i minus a inverse look here okay this is the inverse inverse of uh, inverse of i minus a multiplied by d okay so when we do that we will be able to calculate or we will be able to find out the different results that we need for our study according to the type of equations that may be asked all right so that means when you are to find out the final demand just d is equal to i minus ax that is represented by equation one and that is used to find out the final demand for the different sectors or for x1 x2 or for each sector of the economy now if you are to find out the gross output that is the x okay here x means the here if you want to find out the gross output for the x then you will have to make use of the matrix inversion that is i minus a a is nothing but your input coefficient matrix so always remember when you are to solve the input output uh, analysis or input output problems you always try to first of all have this have this input coefficient matrix and then the final demand if these two things are given for you then you just take uh, i minus a or the identity matrix you form this identity matrix according to the order of this a matrix or the input coefficient matrix so if it is of 2 by 2 order take the identity matrix as 2 by 2 so if this a or the input coefficient matrix is 3 by 3 then take this identity matrix also as 3 by 3 and just take the inverse of that and multiply by d you get the gross sectoral outputs or the you get the gross output for the different sectors or the various sectors of the economy all right guys that's all for today thank you